in service, in person. Y'all make some noise for yourselves. I'm super excited about this message that I want to share with you guys today, but the only way the word penetrates is if you open up your ears and open up your heart, fix your attitude to receive. You have to have a receiving type of attitude. That means I'm coming here expecting to learn something that's going to change my life. When I go to the bank and I'm going to make a withdrawal, I'm going there with the expectation of I'm going to leave there heavier than when I came there. When I went there, I was a little light. But by the time I leave, I plan on being a little what? A little heavy. Right. So the same way comes here. Never come to church, never come to service without leaving with something. Amen? Father God, I thank you, Lord God, for these your precious sheep. I thank you that revelation knowledge flows freely, uninterrupted, and unhindered by any satanical demonic force. Think through my mind, speak through my vocal cords. None of me, all of you. I declare every heart anointed to receive and every ear anointed to hear. Holy Spirit, have your perfect will in this service today. In Jesus' name I pray. All that agree said. Today's title of my message is I Take Full Responsibility. We have to learn how to take full responsibility for our actions, for our emotions, for our behavior, and for the things that we do in life, ultimately our choices and our decisions. When we don't take responsibility, we have a tendency to play the blame, the blame game. Who, who in here doesn't know how to dance? Come in. <laughs> I know it's going to be weird, but, you know, me and you, we're working on something. Only way you're going to break through something you're trying to face is to get out your what? Exactly. So that's what I'm going to do. I want you to dance. And I got something for you. I, I, it ain't going to be for free. Trust me. Right now. Just bust out dancing. Give me some, give me some music. Somebody give me some music. We were made. Just do it. They're going to play you a beat. They finding the beat. There it is. I don't know what beat that is. Okay. Oh, it's the, okay. They got the, all right. We good? She gave me a thumbs up. So press play. There we go. Come on. Clap them up. Clap. Just do what you know how to do. I make sure your brother don't record it. <laughs> Come on. Just dance. Whatever you got. Whatever you got. Whatever you got. <laughs> All right, cut it, cut it, cut it, cut it. Why can't you dance? It's awkward. It's awkward? Yeah. You feel, like, embarrassed? I'm giving everyone secondhand embarrassment. You're giving everybody secondhand embarrassment? Yes. All right. So you didn't blame the floor as the reason why you can't dance, did you? No. Why? The floor ain't got nothing to do with it. No. So what's the reason why you can't dance? I don't know. It's probably just a mental thing. It's a mental thing? Yeah. So you feel like if you was to get out of your head, you probably could be a good dancer. You've seen dances. You're pretty intelligent. If you wanted to mimic what somebody else was doing, you'd be able to do that, right? Yeah. I believe that. So what's holding you back from dancing? Too self-conscious. Too self-conscious. Yeah. How many... People in here, by a show of hands, find themselves self-conscious sometimes and find it hard to do things uh, that other people may not have a problem doing. One of the things that I love about my man, I appreciate you. Make sure they get your email and they get your uh, gift card today, all right? Yeah, not, not next week. Appreciate you, man. So he came up here. He danced. He did his little thing. He admitted, I can't dance. Y'all make some noise for him for getting up here and going against his self-consciousness and doing it anyway. But one of the things that he did not do was blame the floor. He did not blame the floor as the reason why he cannot dance. And I feel like a lot of young people and just people in general, 
we have a tendency to have this knee-jerk reaction or to have this first response of excuses, to have this first response of, it wasn't me, it was him. Let me give you some scenarios. Um, who in here has chores that you have to do at the house? Uh, some people I know in my house, you got to do the kitchen, you got to do the vacuuming, uh, uh, the trash, and you got to walk the dog. That pr that's pretty much and Keep your room and bathrooms clean. That's pretty much it. What, what are some of the chores you're responsible for in your home? You got to clean the what? The cat litter. Okay. So you come home, and when are you supposed to do that? Every day? Or like every, once, twice a week? All right, so twice a week. You come home, one of your parents come in, they see that it's not done. They come to you. They confront you. What's your first response? So you blamed it on her. Was it really her turn? I don't really remember. I just said that's just the first knee-jerk reaction. That's your yeah. first response. That's your reflex. Mm -hmm. That's what we're talking about today, taking full responsibility, because it's definitely, it's definitely a trick of the enemy to try and keep young people young. And what I mean by that is, if you're forever the age you are now, how do you ever develop or mature emotionally? Does that make sense? So the first step in that is being able to take full responsibility. Now, I gave him a simple illustration. Hey, you know, uh, you're supposed to do the cat litter. Did you do the cat litter? Why is it when you're confronted with something, the first thing is to blame someone else? Can anybody answer that for me? Why is that the first thing? Why is that the automatic go-to? Oh, uh, 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 did you clean the kitchen last night? Oh, no, I was really tired. No, what's the truth? What's the truth? Say it again. One more time. I didn't feel like it. But why is that not the knee-jerk reaction? Hmm? It's just an answer. But what does it usually... Uh, does it usually provoke a negative response from a parent? When you give the, you know, the excuse? Most of the, most of the time. Why? It depends how you really say it, though. Like, if you're saying it, just like, I don't feel like it. I just don't feel like it. But, like, if you really just, if she knows what she was doing, then, yeah. Okay. I'm going to give you another situation, all right? What's your name, sweetie? Loray? Yeah. Hey, Loray. How you doing? Good. I'm Pastor Anthony. Pleasure to meet you. Quick question. So you got a boyfriend, right? Let's, okay, if you don't, cool. But we're going to act like you do, okay? You got a boyfriend, right? Uh, how old are you? 15. You're 15. So it's your sweet 16. The big birthday's coming up, right? You've been with a guy for, what's a long time in a, in a, a teenage world? Two months? Three months? Six months? Okay, I'm tripping. Well, no, 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 all right, don't throw rocks at me. So six months is a long time in a relationship for teenagers? I'm thinking that's like forever for me. I'm like, for really? I don't see a lot of teenage relationships going the long haul, you know what I mean? So you've been together six months, long time. Y'all more than just talking. It's official. This is your boyfriend. Your sweet 16 comes up, right? He doesn't show up, right? And when you ask him about it, right, he says, man, my mama was tripping. Uh, my brother had the car. He has, how do you feel? Are you hearing what he's saying to you? I'm just like disappointed. You said to be honest, no? You're just what? Why are you disappointed? Because, like, I would want him to be there. Okay. Would you rather him just come to you and say, babe, I had other things that I wanted to do? Yeah. You would rather him do that? Would it hurt your feelings? Yeah. It would, but you would prefer the truth more than you would prefer the blaming it on somebody else? At least you can recover from that because at least he was honest. Right? 
We got to unpack why it's hard for young people, and not just young people, but for people across the board to tell the truth in the beginning. Let that be your first response. Let that be something that is like your reflex. Somebody slap you. I know if somebody slap you, first thing you're going to do is what? How quick? It's like immediately, right? That's what we call a what? Reflex. How come being able to be brutally honest with people isn't a reflex? How come taking full responsibility of the decisions, the choices, the emotions that we have, how come that's something that is not easy? I need somebody to be able to articulate that for me. Anybody? Go ahead. It can be like negative consequences from telling the truth. Say that again? It can be negative consequences from telling the truth. Hmm. Who agrees with that? Show of hands. It can be negative consequences for telling the truth. What are the consequences for telling a lie or blaming it on somebody else? They won't know. So like. They won't know in that moment. Old folks used to say to me back in the day, you know, everything in the dark come to the light. Ain't nothing you're going to say going to be able to remain up under the water you try to hide it up under. It's going to come out. Somebody going to know the truth, baby, will set you free. If that's the case, why is it the knee-jerk reaction for young people and people across the world to automatically be fake with people? It don't sound too good when I put it that way, do it? Because if you're not real, what are you? Fake. But this is the generation that says what? Keep it real with me. Keep it 100 with me, man. Man, I don't like him, man. He fake, he fake, he fake. But as soon as you're confronted with something, the first thing that comes out of your mouth is something that's not real. Telling people you want to go places. We could go down to the small place. Why didn't you come? Why didn't you come to my party? Here's the truth. I didn't want to go. Here's what makes you feel good. Man, I really tried, man. I overslept, man. And by the time I woke up, man, it was. How you feel if it's something you really want me to come to? You feel betrayed? Because we rock, right? And it's like, man, I really expected you to be there. And if anybody was going to be there, I would have expected it to be been you because you said you was going to be there. But if I come to you and I say, yeah, man, man, I couldn't make it. I, I ain't no excuse. I just didn't want to come. That's the truth. Would you, would you receive it? Yeah, I would. Because you just keep me in the buckle me, so I would mess with you for that. You would mess with me for that. But doesn't it slick kind of change yeah, yeah. your perspective of where we are? Yeah, it would, because I was like, well, I didn't, like, you didn't tell me ahead of time. So, like, that kind of put me in a place, but still, you know, he still okay. told me so, like. Okay. Or it's, man, you know what? I thought we were here, but obviously we're not. So I respect you for telling me the truth, but I'll adjust as far as what I thought this was. Does that make sense? Yeah. Why is that hard to do? Can anybody tell me? I know young people are afraid of confrontation. The Bible says confrontation brings about growth, development. We're talking about maturity. We're talking about maturing emotionally. And this is a part that the enemy really capitalizes off of when it comes to young people because you want people to keep it real with you, but your knee-jerk reflex, your knee-jerk reaction to things is usually fake. So then I come and I confront you, or I go, you know, hey man, man, it's, it's time to praise God. Man, do you love God? Answer me. You do. Even when you're depressed, even when you're hurt, even when you feel like he's absent, even when you feel like you can't see him and everybody just made up this imaginary figure like Santa Claus or the Easter Bunny, 
is telling me yes going to make me feel better or is it going to change you? Because you feel like that's what I want to hear? What am I getting at? I'm getting at I need you guys to be able to keep it real with yourselves so that you can keep it real with other people. I really need you to do that. Because as long as you're, uh, uh, I used to tell my kids, I used to tell them, I said, you know, it's one thing when you lie to me. It's a scary thing when you start lying to yourself. It's very scary. Because once you get to the place in your life when you begin to lie to yourself, <laughs> it'll be hard for you to determine what's real and what's fake, even in yourself. And young people deal with this all the time. So today, I want to share with you some scriptures. And I changed up the scenery today because one, well, I didn't know it was going to rain, but one, I wanted it to be more intimate. I wanted to have more of a conversation with you guys. I wanted to kick it with you. You understand? I wanted to really get into your heads and get you guys to open up to me. Because God is real. I know God is real, but I'm talking to young people that hide and struggle with that fact. But they struggle with that fact silently because if they feel like if they do it publicly in their families, it's the majority. Christianity is the majority in your household. Christianity is, uh, you better not say anything opposite of that because parents are coming down and they're saying this and they're saying that, but kids have questions, right? That's what I want to unpack today. And I'm going to show you how taking full responsibility for your actions, for your choices, for your thoughts, for your emotions is one of the main ingredients in being set free and just truly being, as they used to say, uh, what they used to say, um, I'm free of people. <laughs> you could be in people bondage and not even know it. I guarantee you the majority of the reasons why young people have this re reflex when it comes to, oh, I got to say what you want to hear, most of it is fear. You won't acknowledge it as that, but that's definitely what it is. It's fear. I'm afraid of your reaction. I'm afraid I'm going to hurt you. And even in that, it's noble. It's justified. It's a, you, you, you know, it's, it, it's man, it, it, it's honorable that you're trying to preserve my feelings. But the Bible says, speak the truth and speak the truth in love. And a lot of times we run from that or we shy from that or we try to get away from that because we're afraid. Let's unpack it. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Let's go on this journey. Let me see. How do I take responsibility for my life? Here's the answer. Now listen to this. Responsibility equals accountability. Accountability equals ownership. And I know I keep saying young people, but trust me, adults go through this too. And sometimes their response to you is out of fear. Sometimes, and I'll take full ownership, as adults will tell you what you want to hear instead of the truth and will mask it or will cover it or will get it under the blanket of I was trying to protect you. I didn't feel like you was ready for this information. Um, I felt like if I told you this, you would handle it in a wrong way. I'm guilty of it. I've told my children things that weren't true, not to the point where it would hurt them. See, even now I'm trying to justify it. But I've told them things trying to preserve or trying to, you know, do the right thing or trying to make things right in the moment, but I wasn't telling them the truth. Okay? So adults do it too. But the answer to how do I take full responsibility in my life is one, understand that responsibility equals accountability. What is accountability? Who can tell me? What does it mean to be accountable? Anybody know? Pretty much to um, take responsibility. To take responsibility, okay. But the word accountability, 
account, account, when I think account, it's a banking term, right? So it's, I'm accountable to someone for everything I do, right? When you're at school and the teacher is telling you something, but they're telling it to you in a disrespectful way, what's one of the first things young people say? You ain't my, what? You ain't my mama. You ain't my daddy. You don't talk to me that way, right? The teacher's telling you something the right way, but they're giving it to you on a trash can lid. They're giving you steak and potatoes, good food, but the presentation that they're giving it to you is on a trash can lid. But you really do need that accountability. It's just hard for you to receive it. Why? Because of the way they presented it. So accountability is I'm going to give someone access to pull my coattail. I told my wife uh, a few months ago, I said, anytime you see me acting like this, pull my coattail because I don't want to act like that, right? And she started doing it. And every time she started doing it, I started getting better. And I was in the moment because I'm not mindful of it. She is. She showed me what it was I was doing and I was able to go, oh, shoot, I sure, I sure am. I'm doing exactly what I, I said I didn't want to do. That's accountability. It's holding someone outside of yourself, right, that you can trust. Not everybody you can trust like that. Please don't get it twisted. These people need to be in your holies of holies, right? These people need to be very earning and uh, honorable to be able to receive your trust and your vulnerability and your transparency, okay? Everybody shouldn't be that person, all right? So accountability. And then accountability equals ownership. I own what I did, okay? I didn't come to the party. I didn't come to the party because I didn't want to come to the party, right? And when I think about what I did and how it makes you feel, man, I apologize. What is that doing? I just own my stuff. Now, whatever you choose to do after that is totally up to you. You can make a decision to, uh, you know, not be my friend anymore. You can make a decision to keep it pushing and, all right, well, I'm adjusting, I'm going to do this. That's totally on you, but I own my stuff. How many of you have ever been in a situation with somebody where they've constantly made excuses for the bad behavior or for the poor decision or poor choices that they've made with you instead of just owning their stuff? taking responsibility for their stuff, being accountable for their stuff. You got to be mindful of this stuff because all of those negative emotions that you end up feeling come from that. Just, be, just keep it a buck 50 with me. Keep it 100 with me. Tell me the truth when you speak to me. My wife knows I'm real big on that. If you're going to say something to me, make sure it's the truth. I can deal with Stealing, I could deal with pretty much anything you mention. But all my kids will tell you, don't lie to dad. Because you got every reason to tell me the truth. And in return, I promise to just keep it a buck fifty back with you. That makes sense? So responsibility equals accountability, and accountability equals ownership. The mindset should be, what can I do to improve compared to, but this person did this and did, this person did that. The mindset should be, okay, how am I going to take responsibility? How am I going to take ownership? How am I going to take accountability? Bro, I was wrong. I should have came to that party. I was being selfish. Um, I was being inconsiderate. Um, I was thinking about what other people may say to me. That's why I didn't come. You understand? That's the truth. That's me taking ownership. That's me keeping it all the way a buck fifty with you. But in that, you have now the responsibility of de deciding or choosing how you're going to move with me from here on out. I gave you the truth. The ball is in your court now. You see how that works? I want to go to Galatians 6, 5 and 10 in the New Living Translation. It says, for we 
are each responsible for our own conduct. Those who are taught the word of God should provide their teachers, should provide for their teachers, sharing all good things with them. All right? Let's keep going. Don't be misled. You cannot mock the justice of God. You will always harvest what you plant. All right? Those who live only to satisfy their own sinful nature will harvest decay and death from that sinful nature. But those who live to please the Spirit will harvest everlasting life from the Spirit. Nah. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Ten. Therefore, whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone, especially to those in the family of faith. Go back to the uh, first part of that. Five. For we are each responsible for our own conduct. I'm responsible for my conduct. What's the root word of responsibility? Huh? Response. There we go. Getting back to that response, but not just any response. Your first response. That's why they call them first responders, right? In the case of emergency, you call 911. 911 is also called first responders. So when it comes to your first response, your first response should be that of the truth. Keep it real with people. Own your stuff. Stop making excuses on why this didn't happen and why that didn't happen, okay? Let's go to Genesis 3, 11 through 12. Who's the first person to play the blame game? First person in history to play, the, who? Exactly. Who told you that you were naked? The Lord God asked. Have you eaten from the tree whose fruit I commanded you not to eat? The man replied, Adam replied, it was the woman you gave me who gave me the fruit. And then I ate it. What was Adam looking for when he said that? Anybody? Nobody knows? What was he looking for? What? Wow. Relief. Okay. What else was he looking for? A way out. Come on. Y'all talking to me today. Y'all keeping it real. Because y'all going from y'all own perspective, right? What else was he looking for? I heard relief. I heard a way out. Comfort. Who? Comfort. Comfort. Wow. Mercy. Grace. I know this is a big thing. This is the first time in all of creation disobedience has taken place. You commanded me not to eat of this tree, and I did it. And the first thing he did was, ooh, Eve did it. As if <laughs> it was going to bring relief. A way out. Comfort. No, because what remains the same is, I told you not to eat of that tree. I told you to not eat of that tree. And then I told you that the day that you eat of this tree, you shall surely die. But the automatic reflex, the automatic response was, Eve did it. You see where humanity gets it from? We want something pure by doing something not pure. That makes sense? I want relief to eradicate my disobedience. I want something good, grace, mercy, love, a way out, relief, comfort. I want those things, and I just want you to just overlook that I made a decision to eat the fruit. I made a decision to disobey you. Now, I don't 
believe things would have changed had Adam just owned and accepted responsibility. But there's other instances in the Bible, and we talked about, we talked about Judas a little bit uh, a few weeks ago and different things like that and just taking ownership of the things that you did. But in the garden, taking ownership would have looked like, pull the scripture back up, Genesis 6, 5. Who told you that you were naked? Now, let's know it's Genesis uh, 6, 5 and 10. He said, who told you that were naked? Now, let me give you a little backstory. They didn't realize they were naked until what? Huh? Until they ate the fruit. We don't know if it was an apple. Right? They didn't know. As far as they were concerned, they were just walking. There was no such thing as good and evil. There was no such thing as shame. There was no such thing as body shaming or body insecurity. But the instant they got caught up in disobedience, the first thing they did was try and find figs to cover themselves. Now they, husband and wife, why are they covering themselves, right? You would think that, right? But that's one of the first things that they did. Go, go to Genesis, y'all. That's Galatians. <clears throat> yeah, Genesis 3, 11 and 12. He said, who told you that you were naked? The Lord God asked, have you eaten from the tree whose fruit I commanded you not to eat? 12. The man replied, it was the woman who gave me. It was the woman. Ooh. So who did he blame it on? He said, it was the woman who gave me. It was the woman you gave me. Doggone. You just disobeyed the man, right? Now you're trying to blame your disobedience on him. Ain't that like us folks? Huh? How many of you have ever had that situation happen to you where somebody's done something bad to you, you confront them about it, and they try to flip the whole situation on you? How many of you have ever had that happen by show of hands? Absolutely you have. The man replied, it was the woman you gave me who gave me the fruit, and I ate it. Taking ownership would have looked like Eve. Lord, I take full responsibility. I ate of the fruit. I knew I shouldn't have, and I'm ready to accept whatever consequence I have come in my way. They don't make them like that no more, do they? Who in here is bold enough to be able to keep it 100? No matter the consequence. See, Adam was faced with, what was his consequence? Death. Not a physical death. But death in the Bible, a lot of times, as, we, as I've taught you guys several times, death doesn't always mean a physical death. What does it mean? Separation, exactly. You're separated. Separated from what? Well, God loves you, but you feel separated. There's something in between it. Uh, God protects you. He does. But now there's something in between it. What's the thing that's in between it? Sin, shame, hurt, bitterness, unforgiveness, sin in its rarest, purest form. You see why we needed Jesus to come? See, when Jesus came, he took all of that upon himself, but was guilty of none of it. Make sense? He got on that cross. He said, I'll be sickness. I'll be shame. I'll be hurt. I'll be blame. I'll be, uh, you know, the, the rapes, the hate, the, the anger. I'll be the disgust. I'll be the scum of the earth so that those who believe in me won't have to be. That's how we got into that situation. It all started in the garden, but it all ended on Calvary for most. And when I say most, it means, ah, well, give me the articulation. I believe I said it in Lion's Den last week. Coming to church, 
hearing me preach doesn't create your relationship with God. It gives you knowledge about God. Your relationship with God is built at home. It's built in your choices. It's built in your decisions. It's built in your belief. I need you guys to get that because, and I'm just gonna talk and just be all the way 100 with our online audience and with you guys as well. I'm gonna be all the way 100 with you. I can put a band up here, <clears throat> hire some singers to come up here, or we ain't got to hire no singers, get the singers up here, right? Play with your emotions, or not really play with your emotions, but I can, you know, I know how to set an atmosphere, right? And all of a sudden, hands are lifted, people on their knees, they crying, right? And they leave out the door, the same way they came into the door. But the only difference is they cried and they got highly emotional, right? The anointing, the power of God, the acid test to the anointing is change. I came in angry, I left in peace. I came in addicted, I left free. All of those pluses, the freedom, the, the freedom, the uh, no more addiction and uh, all that stuff, all that is a choice that's left up to you guys. You have to do that. Otherwise, this becomes one of those things where it's constantly a, a show. Man, we got the lights, we got the camera, we got the action, we got all of this stuff, and I cried in service today. Woo! Power of God moved. How do you know the power of God moved? Because I cried and, you know, I don't know. I, I, now crying equates to the power of God moving. And young people get confused. Because you can have tears of joy, right? And you can have tears of true what? Sadness. I'm crying because I'm emotionally hurt. I'm crying because somebody did something bad to me and all of these different things. Pastor Ant, what does this have to do with responsibility? You guys have to take responsibility for your relationship with Jesus Christ. My job is to teach you, build you up, edify you, which means to build up, right? That's my job, to make sure that I can articulate the word of God to you in a way that you can understand it and in a way that you can execute it once you leave here. But the believing part is not something I can do for you. That's something you're going to have to do when you leave here. I can pray for you. I can even lay hands on you, right? But if your belief isn't there, It's null and void. It's not that God's power doesn't work. You got to get to the point where you understand God is real for you. I've never tried to force my beliefs on my children. I did make sure that they were raised up in the church. But once you guys graduate high school, or not just once you graduate high school, once you guys leave the comforts of your home and you get into this world and you start experiencing this thing we call life, it ain't easy. I'm not saying that to instill fear. I'm saying that because it's the truth. It's not easy to all, but especially to those who don't know which way they're going or coming. You got to get to a point where you start understanding I need Jesus, and I'm going to seek him, whether I'm at church, whether I'm at school, whether I'm on a bus. I'm not going to conform to this group or that group. I'm going to take ownership 
I'm going to take responsibility. I'm going to take accountability for not only me and my thoughts and my emotions, but ultimately I'm going to take responsibility for my relationship with God. What's the root word in responsibility? My response. How are you responding to him? What's your response when he says go and the go doesn't match what you want to do? What's your response? How do you move? He says stop, but if you keep going, it's, everything I've been looking for is right there. Everything I've been looking for is right there. He's saying stop. Now that's, <laughs> now we're getting into something. That's the power of God walking when you obey. Culture has taken a sacred word like obedience and tried to water it down to mean slavery to this generation. Am I wrong? Culture is doing that. Everything about culture is trying to water down the original intent and the original meaning of words, the exchanging and altering definitions. And it's moving this generation into a place of confusion. And we got to get better. You got to be able to know the real and know the difference between the real and the fake. Because if you don't, you begin falling for all these impersonators, right? I used to use this example all the time. If an impersonating 2 chains came out here, most of y'all wouldn't be able to tell whether it's the real 2 chains or not. But you'd rock with it because it's like, oh, shoot, 2 chains. Well, maybe not 2 chains. He's old. Who? Uh, Lil Baby, right? If I brought Lil Baby in here and this dude looks exactly like Lil Baby, sound like Lil Baby, got the hair, got everything, got the jewelry all over this fake, and he comes out here, you guys would think, Oh, shoot, little baby was in service until the real little baby came, right? In order for you to be able to identify the fake, you have to constantly have the real in front of you. It's easy to identify fake when it's right next to the real. What's the real, Pastor Ant? The word of God. It's the real. I can't make you believe that. I know from personal experience. I know from cracking my head several times. It was my downfalls that taught me God is real. Everything that I've been trying to prevent young people from having to go down, I don't want people to go down the same path I had to go down. Are you serious? You wouldn't be able to fathom it. And I tell you guys the nice version, the PG-13 version of my story. But I know without a shadow of a doubt Jesus Christ is real. I talk to him. I walk with him. I know his voice. I don't get his voice confused with thoughts. I used to all the time. I was young. And the more and more I got it confused, the more and more I ran. I ran from him. I really did. I'm talking about I was like, uh, what's his song? He's a runner. He's a track star. I was gone. You hear me? I'm trying everything in my power to stay away from the call of God on my life. Didn't even want to acknowledge there was such thing as a call. And in that, I don't know, man, it was goodness and mercy that just kept following me. And when I slowed down a little bit, it began to run me over to the point where <laughs> I stopped and I just let it happen. I don't want you guys to be in your mid to late 20s before that happens with you. That's not my responsibility. That's totally your responsibility and how you respond to the call that he puts on your life. But I need you guys to be mindful that you have to take responsibility for your relationship with God. That's not on me. What's on me is to make sure I educate you on the things of God. But that burden removing, yoke destroying power that you want to experience, you can experience right now in this moment if you like to. But there's something there. There's something there that, that coincides with that knee-jerk reaction 
We're on the outside. It's keep it real with me. Keep it real with me. But when confrontation comes, the knee-jerk reaction is, I'm going to be fake with you. I'm going to be fake with you. I'm not going to tell you the truth. I'm going to tell you what you want to hear because that's what I feel like I should do. When the Bible don't say do that. The Bible says tell the truth in love. Tell people the truth. Keep it 100 with people. Why didn't you come to my party? I didn't want to go. There's a lot of things connected to you, and I didn't want to be associated with those things connected to you at your party. I didn't want to go. That's the truth. Instead of, man, I really want to get there. I really want to make it. I really want. Don't do that. Because in your mind, it's not that big of a deal. No, it is that big of a deal. You're practicing not taking ownership. You're practicing not taking responsibility. You're practicing uh, uh, not taking accountability of your decisions and your actions and your choices. Does that make sense? Clap one time if that makes sense. All right, let's move on. Because I got 15 minutes left. And I want to make sure I get these things to you. <clears throat> the biggest thing in that fake reaction is found in this scripture. 2 Timothy 1 and 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity. Who knows what timidity is? Anybody? Vulnerable. Exactly. Exactly. How'd you know that? Because the root word in timidity is what? My God. Yeah, it's a smart bunch. For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of what? Power. And what? Love. And what? Self-discipline. Self-discipline is, I'm going to discipline myself to be able to tell you the truth. I'm going to discipline myself to be able to, you know, I want to, you know, you do sports. So a lot of times when you're playing sports, the coaches require you to be at school super early before school starts, right? Who experiences that? By show of hands. Boom, 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 boom. What time you got to be at the school? 5.30 a.m.? 6 o'clock a.m.? In the morning? And then go to school? And then you got practice after school, too? It's practice in the morning, not practice at night? Oh, man, y'all different. Because East Scott Weeder, you got to do it in the morning, you got to do it at night. Shane wasn't getting home to like 10 o'clock at night. He would leave at like 6 o'clock in the morning, 5.30 in the morning. Man, they had it good. Wish you guys could have won state. Sandy Creek won. Anyway, God is not giving you the spirit of fear. And timidity, timidity meaning shyness, but of power, man, I'm strong. Love, mm, I'm stronger, right? And self-discipline. I got five ways that you can learn and take responsibility. Number one, write this down. We'll put it in your notes. Start noticing your blaming tendencies. Start noticing your blaming tendencies. When do I have a tendency to blame people for things that I really should take ownership of? When do I do, who told you you were naked? Did you eat of the tree? It was the wife you gave me. Blame. Notice your blaming tendencies. When do I have a tendency or a knee-jerk reaction to blame someone for something that I did. So start noticing your blaming tendencies. What is the role that I played in this? When you ask yourself that or when you do it, it helps you locate the tendency. Sometimes this response is like our first response or better yet, a reaction for most young people. Change the statement from I can't do this to how can I do this? I can't tell you the truth in this moment. No, change that. How can I tell this person the truth? Sometimes it just takes a 30-second pause before you respond. Just pause. Man, I really didn't want to go. I'm sorry. Forgive me. I was wrong. I didn't want to go. Not, 
man, I had a long night. I stayed up all night. I was on the game. I was trying to play GTA. I was almost about to get $1,000, but I couldn't, and I kept losing. And I kept having to do it over and over again. Before I knew it, it was 3 o'clock in the morning. When I woke up, I didn't want to, I didn't want to, I didn't, don't nobody care nothing about all that. When something is done wrong to you, the only thing that matters is what happened. And you have the opportunity to say whether what they tell you is on some real stuff or on some, oh yeah, you just, you just, you just made that up, bro. You're lying right now, you, and you keep lying. You, 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 you dig in the deeper hole as you go. How many of you know when somebody's lying to you? Raise your hand. Yeah, you know, come on, you, you know. Sometimes you don't wanna know, so you accept it, right? Because you don't wanna confront the situation in that moment, and, you know, in this moment, I don't want the smoke. So you accept certain things, which is a bad thing too, because that spirit didn't come from God. Fear and timidity, that's shyness. Why am I being shy with you? I'm not a shy person. God didn't make me that way. So why is it so easy for me to be something he didn't make me? You got to ask yourself these questions. Amen? Clap one time if that makes sense. Number two. So the first one is start noticing blaming tendencies. Number two. Practice your power of choice. How many of you, <laughs> and I do this all the time, how many of you have said yes to something you really didn't want to do? Raise your hand, everybody in here, right? Practice the power of choice. Before you even say yes to something that the later you is not going to agree with that yes with, <laughs> just say I'll let you know. I tell you what, or uh, Dr. Dollar called this an honest lie. <laughs> I'll try. No, you ain't. You know, dog, oh well, you ain't gonna try and come or try and do this or try and do that. All right? Practice your power of choice. You have the power. Choice and decision making is a power because on the other side of that is now your new reality. On, every, on the other side of every decision you make is a new reality. Think of it that way before you start saying yes and no to different things that, you know, sometimes people want you to go to, sometimes people want you to do for them, sometimes people uh, uh, re request from you, certain requests that people have from you. How many of you have, been, have ever been guilty of being a yes man? Somebody say, hey, can you do this for me? Yeah, I can do it. Hey, yeah, 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 can you do this for me? Yeah, I can do it. Hey, can you do this for me? Yeah, I can do it. And before you know it, you got all these obligations to people of something you never really want to do in the first place. But the power of choice says, nah, I don't have time. It doesn't match my schedule. Uh-uh. Get somebody else to do it. Uh-uh. I don't want to do that with you. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I, I, mm -mm. I just, I can't. The later you loves that. Because it's like, man, we get to chill, we get to kick it, we get to kick our feet up and do what we want to do. Why? Because we said no to something that we really didn't want to do in the first place. That's power. That's power. And you know what? It teaches people how to move with you. Think about it. Hey, 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 I really want you to come to this thing and I really want you to do this. Hey, hey, man, man, if you could help me out, man, if you think you could come by and help me do my yard, what? not coming over your house to help you do the yard but there's a piece of you that goes man this is a new friend I'm really trying to show him I'm a good guy I'm really trying to show him man you don't want to do that keep it keep it a buck 50 with him nah Brian ain't gonna be able to do that but you know if it was a different day maybe but nah people learn to respect you more when you keep it 100 with them stop this first response fakeness Stop it. God ain't created you to be that way. For God has not given us the spirit of fear and timidity, but a power, love, and self-discipline. Now, that doesn't mean every time you won't be able to help them. Sometimes you may be like, you know what, hmm, let me think. Give yourself enough opportunity to think about if it's something you want to do and then respond. Don't just reflex. I'm going to tell you, as a youth pastor, I'm going to tell you. Man, I want to make everybody happy. Growth and development says, I can't. I can't show up for everybody. But then, well, you showed up for this person, but how come you didn't show up for this person? 
I can't show up for everybody. But what I, who I can show up for, I will. So does it mean that you like this person more than you? No, it, it don't mean that. Well, what does it mean, Pastor Ant? Brutally honest? Can we have a brutally honest moment? Man, I got, I got kids of my own. I got a wife of my own. I got a whole situation at home I got going on, and I got to be there for them too. I would love to be there for you in this moment. I just can't. But you got parents. Did that hurt you? I'm sorry. I told you the truth in love. But how you receive it is, I really wanted the what? I really wanted the yes. I really wanted the relief. I really wanted the comfort. Right? I really wanted that part. But because I didn't get it and I got the truth, it comes off as if I gave you a bad thing, but I didn't. I gave you the truth. What I'm trying to get you guys to do is get to a point where you can grow up and accept the truth when it comes your way because it will not always feel good. It will not always look good. It will not always sound good. You understand me? Clap one time if that makes sense. So practice your power of choice. Your power of choice is, oh my goodness, I don't think you understand how much of a powerhouse that is. You get to choose who you want to talk to. You get to choose who you don't want to talk to. You get to choose, right? Especially when you get older, as teenagers, your, your, choices, are, your, your choices have to go to, through a, a, a filter. You know what the filter's called? Your parents. <laughs> hey, I want to choose to go to this party. No, you just can't choose to go to this party and you live in my house, eat my doggone food. I pay your gas, I pay your insurance, I pay everything you got, everything you wear. You look, your swag, your everything, your ribs come from me. You ain't finna doggone just, you know. You know what I mean? Clap one time if that makes sense. Clap one time if it makes sense, but you don't like it. <laughs> Why was the second clap louder? You feel me? But it's the truth. Once you're grown, you got your own things, your choices don't have as many filters, but you still got the filter of your relationship with God. But a lot of times, and I'm trying to get you guys to get this now, is that if you don't take God seriously now, life after you graduate and move out is going to be hard. Because you'll find him, but you'll find him the hard way, it never fails. Teenager after teenager, doom, 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 doom. We do the graduation service. They come up, they get the boom. We take a picture, right? We keep that picture. Two, three years come back. They come back, Pastor Ant. They look different. 23-year-olds look like they're 33-year-olds. I'm serious. And then, Pastor Ant, can I talk to you? And as much as I want to go, man, I got all these other kids that are current kids I want to talk to. I always find myself, yeah, come on. Let's go. I don't say, well, won't you go find Pastor Carol or, or, or Brother Terrell, Minister Terrell, or one of the adult pastors, because this is my calling right here. No, they came, and I'm a, I'm going to talk to him just like I'll talk to you. But it gets increasingly harder. I'm trying to get you guys to work those muscles now. Get those muscles activated now. What muscles? The responsibility, the taking ownership muscles. Take responsibility. Take ownership now. So as you get older, it becomes easier and easier instead of harder and harder. Because the lessons that you keep battling with today will be the lessons that you keep battling with tomorrow until you finally go, enough's enough. I'm tired of going back and forth with this same thing. Lord, show me. Lord, teach me. All right? Number three, become accountable. When you hold yourself <clears throat> accountable to others, you find yourself taking ownership for your own actions. LOL. I'm grown, 
or you ain't my mama, you don't tell me what to do. No, you better find somebody that you can be accountable to. Otherwise, you get out there, you start living this thing called life, and you get sucked into the freedom because you, you mistaken the protection as bondage. You've, mis you've mistaken the nose as suppression. My parents have been trying to suppress me. They've been trying to uh, keep me from this, been trying to keep me from that. Now I'm out here. There's no accountability. I'm going to go in. I'm going to go in. My mom always told me not to talk to that dude. I'm going to talk to that dude now. My mom always told me not to talk to that girl. I'm going to talk to that girl right now. Yeah, I know what Pastor Ant was saying about uh, uh, spirits and familiar spirits and how they transfer and how there's an active enemy. But, man, I want to do what I want to do because I'm not accountable to anybody. You usually see those people, they find God, but when they find them, they're so broken. And I guess, in a way, it's a good thing. I don't feel like you have to go through that. I do feel like you have to go through things. But life-altering, God will use those things for his good. He will. He doesn't bring those things to you. But I've seen some things. I've seen young people go out there just being promiscuous and free. And they come back. Pastor Ann, I'm messed up. What's going on? And it takes hours and hours and hours for them to say, I contracted HIV. And I can't, I, 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 I can't accept that. So, so I remember what you said. By his stripes we are healed, right? Right? Yeah. But I don't feel like young people should have to go through all. You got to go through all that to know God is real. There's folks out here dying left and right. Folks out here getting murdered left and right. This country right now is in a place that it has, hasn't been in in over 60, 70 years. I don't even think you guys have a clue on what's going on right now in the world, do you? Just another day? You're going to go home, you're going to play GTA, you're going to watch some Netflix? There's a lot going on out here. What was once made to be, oh man, yeah, man, I got to make sure I get me a Miri shirt, I got to make sure I get, you know what I'm saying, I got to get my hair done, I got to get my, got to get my shoe, right? I got to get. You're about to see how meaningless all that stuff is. Be accountable. Clap one time if that makes sense. Number four. <sighs> Try discomfort. Success does not come in your comfort zone. You hear me? Greatness does not come in your comfort zone. Try discomfort. Blaming different people and circumstances, you'll never come out of your comfort zone. While comfort zones feel safe, change never happens in the comfort zone. It never happens. I'm comfortable here. I'm, I'm, I'm safe here. I'll just, I'll just keep doing what I normally do. I'll stay out the way, and, and, and I'll make sure that, that uh, you know, okay, uh, he wants smoke, I'm going to stay away from that guy because I don't want smoke. Uh, uh, he wants confrontation, I'm going to stay away from that guy because I don't want confrontation. Um, um, I'm afraid to speak, I'm going to make sure that I keep myself in a position where I never have to speak to people. No, if you're afraid to speak, step up to the mic. How else will you beat it? You got to learn how to send certain things that come your way back to its sender. God is not giving you the spirit of fear or timidity. So if you're feeling timid, step up to it. And don't flinch. I come from a generation where it was all about the standoff. 
Some of you need to learn how to face your opponents squared up and you don't blink. You don't flinch. Where he go, you go. Where it go, you go. You following it. And you wish it would. A lot, that's not people all the time. We keep trying to blame people. It's not people. Sometimes it's emotional issues within yourself that you're fighting. But it comes out as an attack towards other people because you don't know how to articulate what it is you're going through. Does that make sense? Get yourself to a place where it's like, Lord, I trust you. I trust that you've not given me the spirit of fear. I trust that you've given me the spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind. I have a sound mind. I have self-discipline. I have enough self-discipline to be able to tell people the truth. I have enough self-discipline to be able to stand on the edge of that plane. How many of you have ever seen people go skydiving? Uh, Pastor Alyssa, she went skydiving. One of the craziest things I've ever seen her do. Uh, the second most craziest thing I've seen her do was get on the slingshot with DJ, right? She got on the slingshot with DJ. DJ was, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Alyssa was like this. Yeah. That's what's up. Why? Because she's practiced facing her opponents since she was younger. Did y'all know Alyssa was in the Army? Did any of you know that? She, she was a soldier. She still is a soldier. When you see her preach, she preach like a soldier. Little old lady, this big, firecracker. If I'm going to war, she's definitely with me. You wouldn't have somebody bigger? No, see, you keep looking at the outside appearance. It's not the outside appearance. It's what's on the inside of that person. What happens when the squeeze comes? When I squeeze you, what comes out? Will it be fear and timidity? Or will it be confidence, trust, reliance in God? Total dependence on God. Face your opponents squared up and don't blink. What's your opponent? Fear. What's your opponent? Self-doubt. What's your opponent? Insecurity. What's your opponent? Confusion. You see, some of you, you think things are this way because society, social media has shaped and molded your perspective. Likes, views, follows have shaped and molded your perspective. So some of you equate your value to the views, the likes, the follows. Where they do that at? Your royalty. Your sons and daughters are the most high God. Does that make sense? Clap one time if that makes sense. All right, what was that, number four? So try discomfort. Get out of your comfort zone. Stop trying to be so comfortable all the doggone time. Growth doesn't take place in your comfort zone. I'm just going to play, uh, I'm, I'm just going to play video games. I'm just going to play basketball on 2K. I don't want to do it in real life because in real life, I'm going to look doofy and I don't want people to laugh at me. <laughs> what? What are you talking about? Get your butt out there and learn how to play basketball. <laughs> but I'm in 11th grade. What was the dude, uh, 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 the, the dude that is real good with fundamentals, old school player? Uh, Tim Duncan. Tim Duncan ain't started playing, and Dennis Rodman. Dennis Rodman and Tim Duncan ain't started playing basketball until like the 12th grade. Dominant in the game. It's never too late, but do it. Face your opposition. Face these hard things. Here's the last one, and I'll close. Stop making excuses. All of these things that I'm giving you are ways that you can learn and take responsibility. These are the steps that you take to learn how to take responsibility. Ownership, accountability. Stop making excuses. You know why your parents get so upset when you make excuses? Because, and I've been telling my kids this since they were younger. When you give someone an excuse, it says to that person that you plan on doing the same thing again. 
Think about what I just said. And then think about every time somebody is giving you an excuse or you've given someone else an excuse about something. What's going on in school, man? Man, the teachers. Man, the, the, man, it's the teachers. Man, it's the kids in my class. Man, I don't understand. The teacher, that's the one I used to always hear. The teacher got a strong uh, accent and I don't be understanding what he be saying. So everybody in the class is failing? Instead of taking ownership, that, man, I've been goofing off in that class. I really ain't been paying attention because, honestly, it's not like a, a what do they call it, a, 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 a rigor class that I really need, but it's a class. And I'm failing the class because it's not like a, 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 class, that, a, a class that matters or a class that will make me graduate, all right? That's the truth, right? I'm probably still going to say, I don't care what the class is. You get your butt in there, you do what you need to do. But that's me holding you accountable because if you're practicing taking the shortcuts in school, then you'll take the shortcuts in life. This ain't about school. Your parents, my job is to prepare you to leave. The whole process, everything that you're going through right now is because one day you won't be under our supervision. And I know that you're grown, I tell my kids this, I know that you're grown when you're able to say to yourself what I say to you without me having to say it to you. That's when I know growth has taken place. When you're able to hold yourself accountable and do these things. Does that, does that make sense? Clap one time if that makes sense. Listen, I really need you guys to start owning your relationship with God. And start taking it more serious. This world, you know what, I'm going to be more specific. The United States of America. And everything, not just in the United States, but in other countries. Things are about to change. Drastically. Your swag won't matter. Your style won't matter. We're getting to a place where the only thing that matters is your belief and your comfortability in your belief, or not your comfortability, but your confidence in your belief. I use the example all the time. None of you checked the legs of your chairs before you sat down. You simply just sat in your chairs. Well, I need your belief in Jesus Christ to be the same way. Lord, I just trust you. I trust you. I trust your word. I trust your voice. I honor your voice to the point where I know it. And a stranger's voice I will not follow. Get to that place. Pastor Ant, how do I do that? Coming here, I educate you. What do you do with education? Hmm? You what? You apply it. That's when it begins to happen. I can stand here and boldly say, I will not give you false information. The information that I give you is not only biblical, but it's tried and true. I practice it myself. If I hadn't practiced it, I'm not going to speak on it. It works. He works. He's real. He matters. But there's a great distraction for our young people. It's not that you're bad people. You're distracted. You're distracted by culture. You're distracted by what other, everybody else got going on. And it's time for you to focus. Focus on what? It's not focus on what. It's focus on who. Focus on him so that you can know you and know your call and your purpose here on this earth. What part do you play? when it seems like everything around you is in turmoil, what part do you play? You talk about peace that passes all understanding? 
in these upcoming months, there's going to be a lot of things that try to instill fear in you. But if your knee-jerk reaction could be, God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. See, it starts off you just saying it, declaring it, decreeing it. Every time the, 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 the temptation to get into fear comes in, to get in timidity comes in, to get into panic comes in. God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. These are the things that I'm saying to my son who currently right now is in the Navy in San Diego. While all of these things with this country is going on, I speak life into him. Because I understand he's a kid still who's in an adult environment where he's having to remember, recall, and stand on every lesson, whether he was listening or not. Ooh. <laughs> that sounds scary to some, but not when you know who you are in Jesus Christ. My demeanor, my demeanor, my posture, my stance comes from my faith in God, just like it should come for you. Has it always been easy? Heck no. To this day, sometimes it gets hard. But God has made each and every one of us to be resilient. He said, in this world, you will have trials. You will have tribulations. But be of good cheer. For I, he, has overcome the world. Lord, I trust you. Why do you trust God so much? Because if I trust me, I'm doomed. Anthony by himself. Anthony in and of, him, in and of himself? No. I'm going to say, man, get the guns, man. We got to go. Bunker down. Make sure you're stacking all your food. Make sure you got your food ready. Make sure you got that. You know. Anthony in Christ, no weapon formed against me will prosper. Every tongue that rises up against me shall be condemned. No Fear here. I'm not talking about physical fighting. I could do that too, but that ain't going to get me nothing but locked up. I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about stepping up to your timidity, stepping up to your fears, breaking through your comfort zones, and stepping out and saying, all right, world, here I am. You know, what you got? What you got? Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. No weapon formed against me will prosper. Every tongue that rises up against me shall be condemned. What's happening? What you got? Throw it at me. Hmm? Are you trying to throw porn this way? Nah, I'm good on that. I'm good on that. Overcame that when I was 13. What else you got? Anger and unforgiveness you trying to throw? Nah, I'm good on that, homie. What else you got, bro? What else you got? You got to come better than that. You got to come stronger than that. The death of a loved one. Man, I appreciate that they in heaven. I miss them. I miss my daddy. I wish I spent more time with him instead of holding all this regret against him before he left. But I got peace and comfort in knowing that he's with, he's with God. I trust you. And sometimes I'm saying it with tears in my eyes, but you got to do it. You got to say it. You got to be it. You got to believe it. Otherwise... You're just like the rest of them. It's hard to be real when you're surrounded by fake. But the fake can only get a glimpse of the real when you choose to be it. You hear me? Sometimes the only Bible people to read will be you. Are you picking up what I'm putting down? Are you digging what I'm saying to you? Life ain't no game. This ain't no joke out here, man. It's not. Stuff happening every day. The Bible says the enemy goes around like a lion seeking who he can destroy. 
which means he can't see everybody. But if he's going around like a lion, if you're thinking about a lion, it's usually the timid and fearful gazelle that gets ate up. God ain't gave me the spirit of fear. So I won't look, smell, act, or even taste like fear. Anything remotely close to it, step away from it. So you're trying to tell me you're never afraid. That's not what I'm saying. The temptation to be afraid always is knocking on my door, especially as the head of my household, especially as a leader. Everybody wants to be the leader. But as the leader, anything that goes wrong is my fault. It's not Chaz's fault. It's not Constance's fault. It's not Alyssa's fault. It's not Ironic's fault. It's my fault. You understand? I'm not blaming security. I'm not blaming no, it's, that's on me. That type of pressure, you don't think fear tries to come up on me? How do I get rid of it? I don't want nothing that come from Satan. So I'm gonna return that to its sender. So. My wife is saying something. What would you say about it? Just say it. You're just smiling. You were saying something. Oh, what you, sign language. I don't understand. Never mind. Okay, okay. That's all I got. Did you learn something today? Did you learn something today? Man, I love you. I really love you. Pastor Ann, you don't even know my name. I don't need to know your name. I love you, and I pray for you. I'm glad that you got up in the rain and in the bad weather and came to service. My staff and I are constantly praying for you, and we're super excited about the things that are to come. I don't care what's going on in this world. We're going to make sure our kids have fun. So we got spring break coming up. We're going to Six Flags. We're going to, we got a rage room coming here. Some of y'all just got a lot of anger. You just need to let it out. So we got a whole bunch of sludge, sledgehammers and baseball bats and stuff that you could just break and go ham on. Just, uh, just let it out, you know. We got that. That's going to be here. And then what was the last thing, babe? I think it's the, oh, the movies. We're supposed to be going to see uh, Shazam. So if you hadn't registered for that, just go to the Welcome Center and make sure that you sign up for that. If there's anybody out there, who hasn't accepted Christ as their Lord and personal Savior. Listen, it ain't nothing deep. All you got to do is repeat after me, and it's making the best decision you've ever made in your life. If you're in here and you hadn't accepted Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, all you got to do is repeat after me. Say, Father God, I admit that I am a sinner. Come into my life. Be my God. Be my Lord. I surrender my spirit, my soul, and my body to you. Lord, I say yes to your will. I say yes to your way. I say yes to you as my Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you just said that prayer, and we want to make some noise for you because you have just entered the body of Christ. We have some information that we want to get into your hands. If you can text, I'm saved, one word, if you're in here or if you're online, text, I'm saved, one word, to 51555, and we got some information that we want to put into your hands. It'll come to you by way of digital download. I think we got some food over there for y'all. We got some food over there? What's on the way? The pizza ain't here yet? Who we ordered it from? Domino. We need to switch to Papa John's. They're going to show up on time. You know what I'm talking about? These babies hungry. Y'all hungry? Y'all don't feel like waiting, do you? Huh? It's raining. There y'all go making excuses for Domino's. You don't even work for Domino's face. It's still raining? Mm. Yeah, it don't matter. Rain, sleet, or snow like the post office. You feel me? We hungry. So now we got offering. Is somebody coming up? Who's coming up? Come on up, baby. Love you guys.
Hello, WCYU. My name is Fazwa. Um, before we get into offering, I just want to congratulate everyone who just received Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Beautiful Souls of the Universe, this is Glory. I am back.